Learning the secrets of the birds and yeah. the bees and the wasps can be a hazardous pursuit. Did you get stung that day when we were on campus? Oh, I sure did. thing hit me in the ankle. That's right, your leg swelled up like a melon. Right. Georgia Institute of Technology biology professor Michael Goodisman and his team are willing to take it on the ankle and wherever else these aggressive yellow jackets may sting. All right, it's time to zip in, I guess. To find out what goes on in the Queen's boudoir, if you will. All right, very good. Let's put the gloves on just to finish off the complete outfit. And also make walking through this backyard a little less perilous. They make me abandon any place they are with a 10 feet radius because they are indeed the nastiest, most aggressive insects I've encountered. He's talking about yellow jackets, wasps with an attitude, and perhaps not coincidentally, the Georgia Tech mascot. They build nests in bad places, underneath plants or near houses, and so they, they are a pest. We're going to go dig them out of the ground while they're still alive. So pour a little bit of ether, just a little bit down their entrance hole, that will hopefully anesthetize them. Okay, here they come. <laughs> and I can't get in there. Can you pour some ether in there? Yeah. They are agitated, no doubt about it. Ooh, she's a big one. Wow, she's big. Not a lot of workers, though. Very interesting. Yellow jackets may seem eager to inflict pain, but they have some important redeeming qualities. They kill harmful garden pests and are among the most social insects on the planet, like their stinging cousins, the fire ants and honeybees. They are very much like honeybees in that they have a single queen that heads the colony. There's the queen, this larger individual surrounded by all her daughter offspring, the workers. They're all just hanging out. They'll come to in just a minute, though, that's for sure. But apparently, yellow jacket queens are players. DNA testing reveals they have multiple sex partners, unlike honeybees. So instead of sister workers, half-sisters guard the nest and feed the queen. Goodisman is using National Science Foundation support to try and understand these complex relationships and how they impact these intricate communities. There's a big question out there, in general, about why females of any animal species would mate with multiple males. Goodisman is not just focused on sex. He's also curious about how social insects within a community work as a team. They have the highest level of sociality. A queen cannot effectively live without a worker and a worker without a queen. He also studies another aggressive backyard pest, fire ants. At this Georgia Tech physics lab, photographs and x-rays capture fire ants at work, digging elaborate underground tunnels. For these ants, caring for their brood and keeping their queen safe are more important than their own lives. This floating blob of fire ants demonstrates their allegiance. So fire ants do form these living rafts of ants when they get flooded. They basically float on their young and they'll cannibalize each other to some extent if they have to until they hit land. But the colony survives, that's what it's all about. The colony survives, the queens survive. That is a queen. So you can see she's very different from the workers, much larger than the workers. The male has wings, you see that one right there? It's got a little tiny head and big shoulders, which is kind of a running joke. So they, they're basically all muscle and very little brain. They don't have much that they do except fly off and, and mate. And so we study social insects to understand social behavior. He also understands a lot by studying wasps' nests. He hopes to learn what factors determine whether an egg becomes a worker or a queen. Queens are much larger. They're built differently. Uh, their physiology is different. They're really two completely different animals. What we have here is actual comb. You can see the cells here are pretty small, and that's because this comb is used exclusively to rear workers and males, both of which are relatively small. The queen's quarters, or comb, have much bigger cells, and Goodisman believes that may make the difference. The queen comb is uh, right, right here. This comb was produced exclusively to rear new queens, which are larger than the workers and the males. All right, let's get this sucker out of the ground. And, and Oh, she's a big one. Meanwhile, in that yellow jacket-plagued backyard... All right, we're good. The hunt is a success. The homeowner has reclaimed his garden, and researchers leave with three nests, and this time, nary a sting. All right, nicely done. Victory over the yellow jackets. Careful how loud you say that on this campus. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.